There will be a total of six seven-minute rounds. The winner of the most rounds will be the winner of the match. Introducing first the challenger from Tampa, Florida, weighing 219 pounds, Mike Graham. His opponent from Amarillo, Texas, weighing 235 pounds, the Florida heavyweight champion, Dory Funk, Jr. The introductions have been completed now, and we do have standby matches in the event that uh, uh, either man is injured and cannot continue. Uh, we have Charlotte Cook going up against Boblinski, and uh, also uh, uh, Kelly Kaniski will be uh, uh, in a standby match if needed. A quick hip lock takedown by Dory Funk Jr., the Florida heavyweight champion. And I might point out, too, that Bruce Tharp, our ring announcer, uh, will be, uh, once the match is four minutes in duration, he will then begin to announce the time if that becomes necessary. Dory Funk is starting this match out in beautiful manner. You see, Dory's got a fantastic thing going for him. Everybody worries about Dory attacking their legs with that spinny toe hole, which usually means the end of a match. So everybody comes out with all types of defenses in their mind and how they're going to avoid the spinning toe hole being put on them. Dory takes advantage of the situation by making 99% of his attack into the head, thoracic region, and the shoulder region. Notice the side headlock, the front headlock, the side chancery, the front chancery. The fantastic and violent forearms he brings into the head of the men and will take the head off a rhinoceros. Here we have an outside cradle by Dory. He's got Mike in an awful lot of trouble. But again, you see what he's doing here. He's using that top Nelson. Again, he's putting pressure and the fellow's thinking defense has to now think about defense to the top of his body. When he came in, he was thinking about defense to the bottom. Now he's going to an inside cradle. The thing that people may not realize about this and have not, never been in the ring, you're having an awful hard time breathing in there. You are, your chest has been constricted into a smaller area and naturally the hold is covering up the respiratory intake. And again, he's staying right on that upper area, Gordon, and it's so devastating because most wrestlers are thinking how to stop the spinning toe hold. Then Dory goes in and attacks the upper body, and here come those forearms, and they take the head off the rhinoceros. Exactly three of those forearms now. A fourth forearm that has Mike Graham uh, rocking on that uh, ring rope, a fifth, and now Dory Funk Jr. beginning to unleash that heavy artillery, brings him back to the canvas once again. And so Dory Funk Jr. Uh, uh, moving uh, uh, with an, an intensity uh, with six or seven minute rounds. Uh, I believe he'd like to go uh, four straight if he could, but I doubt seriously he's going to be able to do that to Mike Graham. He's doing an awful lot. I'm doing an awful lot of talking about Dory Funk Jr., but. He is in the man that I consider in the top four wrestlers in the world today, Mike Graham. I consider both of these wrestlers to be in the top four wrestlers. This, again, is my personal opinion. Mike Graham, at, on any given night, with all due respect to Dusty, could himself be the world's heavyweight champion. He's wrestling the former world heavyweight champion in Dory Funk. We had two of the epitome of all wrestling. Here we saw the reversal. Mike used that power strength that he's noted all over the world for, and he's got Dory in a bar series. Look at the tremendous power to pick that man up. Dory must weigh about 230 pounds. Long, rangy bone, taller than his ears, and it's not easy to pick that tall man up. It's a classic confrontation. There's certainly no question about this. And uh, Mike Graham, who has been doing a considerable amount of traveling uh, of late, he's been overseas several times. Uh, wrestled uh, throughout the Orient, now traveling around the United States and competing. But of course, uh, being from Florida, full slam by uh, Dory Funk Jr. Graham breaks it up back on his feet. As Dory Funk Jr. back up, and a full body slam on Funk, Funk Charter, and it's Graham catching it. An arm drag takedown. Beautiful underarm wing, an arm drag takedown, as you call it, that, that wing, and he put him back in that bar series. And Mike's idea seems to be at this point of the game to make Dory defense, defense that left arm he's working on. And I'm sure, however... Three minutes Mike, remaining, three minutes. Probably using some of the same psychology that Dory does. Maybe he'll set a defense up on this left arm, and then I can go for that figure four. Back on their feet once again. Uh, uh, warning uh, Funk, he had a hold of the top of Mike Graham's head and uh, so Funk he tried early on to see if he could stun Mike Graham and uh, score a pinfall and uh, get an early start and he's going to suddenly finding out that uh, Mike Graham is an extremely resilient competitor. Oh, 
Richie Murs. Took him into a saddle colonel, but he sprung out for his strength. But the back is taking tremendous aim. Underarm wing and back into a bar series. You know, Mike has wrestled Dory just enough times now. You know, Mike, I'm very proud to say that I have a little bit of association with starting Mike in wrestling years ago. But Mike was probably of the thousands of boys that I've had contact with, the quickest study that I've ever noticed. You can show Mike a thing one time, and he stores it in the file cabinet. Two minutes remaining. Dory with a beautiful, beautiful drop-down toe hold there. And... He has come over to the legs here in an effort to make an escape and a reversal, but I'm sure he's going to go back to the leopard body. As I was saying before, Mike is not the average wrestler. Mike has a file cabinet for a memory green in there, and I'm sure he has wrestled Dory enough times to know just where to go, when to go, and when not to go. Here's a tremendous amount of strain with a reverse chin lock, an awful lot of strain on the sternos, but as you were saying, Gordon, He's been working out heavy with the weights, and his neck and shoulder show. They certainly do, and of course, uh, as you had mentioned earlier, things like this do have a tendency to hamper that breathing, and uh, the entire cardiovascular system begins to suffer as a result of it. Back in action once again, it's Graham bringing Funk into a full body slam. One minute remaining. Oh, Glory went in to try to attack that upper body again. Mike was acquired knowledge and strength. Land them off, and of course, wing them off. 45 seconds. And ring savvy, Dory takes over. He knows when to go out of the ring. It's not the most popular thing in the world to do, but this is the thing that retained a world title for him for many years and has kept him on top of the pack. 30 Mike seconds. Graham, realizing that Funk was obviously stalling, uh, trying to eat up time, he tried earlier for a pit submission, but not a I'm anxious to see if he can't get Funk into a submission. 15 seconds. Working on that left arm again. He's got the bar. 10 seconds. Bending a little bit. Working the inside. And again, crashes down. 5 seconds. By Sheppard's major with the left arm of Mr. Funk. One thing about Funk, he never underestimates an opponent. And I believe that's time, Gordon. It was. The first round is over. The first round is over. Neither man able to gain a pinfall or a submission. Remember, this match is for the Florida Heavyweight Championship under Australian or British Empire rules. Six seven-minute rounds. The first seven-minute round ended in a draw. Neither man was able to gain a pinfall or a submission. We are now in the second seven-minute round. I might point out the winner of the most rounds will win the uh, match, and if it is Funk, he will retain his title. If it's Mike Graham, he will become the new Florida heavyweight champion. And Graham, moving very aggressively, now goes for the figure four, broken up by Dory Funk Jr. One thing that Mike may have to watch out for is that youthful exuberance that he has and a desire to take the match to the champion very quickly. You notice that the champion, who has been there many, many times over the years in many, many countries, he's playing it, as you've said many times, Gordon, he's playing it cool. He's keeping his thoughts calm and collected about him. He's not going to rush this match. He knows he's in with one of the most formidable opponents in the world today. And he has a great love and desire of retaining that Florida title. You know, there's nothing foolish is going to come from Funk. Hope that Mike, uh, as I must admit, I'm very partial towards him. I've approached him a little bit. Now I'm a little upset because Terry Funk has just come to ringside. And uh, we have seen so many times before, John, whenever uh, uh, there was one Funk around, generally the other one is there and they can spell trouble. Yes, many, many times. Uh, I guess if you count the times on the fingers of one hand when there hasn't been trouble, when they both are this close together in the proximity of the ring. Mike's got Dory in quite a bit of trouble here. The tremendous leg powers that the legs that have squatted with six, 650 pounds, exerting all that pressure from the biceps femoris. Supernado left his muscles, bridged them up, picked them up with a slam. He's going for the figure four. Again, broken up by uh, Dory Funk Jr. and uh, 
Dunk perhaps just a little bit desperate at this point. Uh, I think he had uh, hoped to uh, catch an early fall on Mike Graham in that first round, was unable to do so. And uh, to my way of thinking, uh, John, at this point in time, uh, uh, Mike Graham has been more the aggressor in this uh, in this round thus far than uh, Dory Funk Jr. There's a possibility that Mike has found a little dent in the armor of Dory Funk there, and he's wrestled him enough times. He may be feeling that the timing is right now to become very aggressive and take that first fall. You know, he'll only need, well, he only needs three falls now to win this match. Outside the ring, and uh, so Mike Gray Terry Funk, a Sunday by uh, Terry Funk, and Mike Graham has been staggered, and a forearm by Dory Funk Jr. that has Mike Graham in a lot of trouble here, another stinging forearm, and another one, uh, these percussions to the head, short-circuiting uh, the brain, if you will. And it is uh, creating more and more problems. A deep, deep double underhook. It's in an awful lot of trouble here, but I think it was predetermined and set up an awful lot by the work of Terry Funk, the man on the outside of the ring there. Deep inside cradle. There's the pinfall. He has the pinfall. Remember, however, this is six seven-minute rounds, this match, six seven-minute rounds. The bell is rung, and uh, Dory Funk Jr. very quickly charging out, trying to take full advantage of that uh, bomber pin, and uh, is uh, continued to a barrage on uh, Mike Graham using those forearms. And uh, Mike Graham in a lot of trouble here, and Graham again hurtled from the ring. This is a Florida championship match. Six, seven minute rounds. The first round was a draw. Dory Funk Jr. took the uh, second round and is now trying to gain that third round. Vertical souffle and it is... Uh... No sir, Mike Graham came out of it but it took every bit of second effort to second This is a result of years of training, and of course it's a, an inherited attitude in the Graham family. You just do not give up, period. And tremendous strength, plus that attitude is the only thing to say, Mike, is a strong top Nelson vertical souffle. He's taking tremendous beating right now. And he came out again with a bridge and a push slide away. Funk knows that this is his big opportunity to take this match right now. He can take the second match, take the second fall, and only had to take one more, and he would take the, retain his title. Again, that bridge. You see that bridge in there, Gordon, and then that push out? That's the thing that brings him out of there. The tremendous development. And the sternal cut on that tortoise muscle in the super leaders. Plus, again, once again, that instinct. Ram desire of not losing. He will not admit defeat. And it's just not going to be easy to beat. Dory Funk Jr. Wow, and it is Mike Graham retaliating and retaliating again. The shots are coming into the Sariba area just where Mike wants him to land. And they're taking an effect. He's got to slow Dory down. Snap mail over by Dory. This is for that elbow drop. And Mike Graham back in there. Short chopping hard right hand. Good flying drop kick. And it is Mike Graham battling his way back. Missed with that drop kick as Dory Funk Jr. Stepped to one side. A knee lift that drives the Graham back to the canvas again. Oh boy. Top Nelson has got him set up for a deep inside jackknife cradle. He's got it. And so, at the end of round three, 
One round is a draw, and two rounds to the current Florida heavyweight champion, Dory Funk Jr. We'll be back. Forearms and uh, fists flying now between the two of them, and it is uh, Mike Graham catching the edge. That time has uh, Dory Funk Jr. staggered down to one knee. Funk shaking his head. Those cobwebs are on him now, and it's Mike Graham sensing, sensing it indeed, using that right hand very, very effectively. Tried to snap Mare, and it was uh, Dory Funk Jr. hanging onto those ropes. Graham caught that time by Funk as he was up against the, the turnbuckle, and it is Funk again who has not lost his cool. But is, in my opinion, uh, John, a very, very desperate man. Well, I think he can find I think he still feels that tremendous strength of Mike Gray. He certainly does, and that's Mike's not going to lose that strength because Mike, so, as long as Mike is breathing and able to think, you are not going to make him quit. You are not going to just beat him like an average or ordinary human being. The thing that's going to remain in my mind and in the minds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of fans are watching is how much effect the fact that Terry Funk inflicted his harm on Mike Graham. And here we have a standing open guillotine. He's got an over leg, and he's got the top side Nelson applied right here. Tremendous amount of pressure being exerted again on the supernators and the sternal mastoid of Mike. Plus, it's awful hard to breathe. And Mike Graham fighting this, but uh, Dory Funk Jr. can sense that victory now coursing through his veins and... Uh, Mike trying desperately to extricate himself if he can. The referee checking again to make sure that uh, Funk is not getting any extra leverage. And it appeared he might have been. But any average wrestler, I'm sure, would have conceded by now. We are looking at not only one superhuman wrestler, two superhuman wrestlers in this match. And Mike being able to do a hip toss with a, an unbelievable amount of strength. He has to possess in his body and take that hold away from Dory Funk. Here he comes in with what I call one of his most excruciating holes. It's a top Nelson and he joins it into something like a side inside cradle. You cannot breathe from this position. Plus he's pushing him into an inside cradle fall. And look at the way Mike Graham is battling to keep that shoulder off. A definite predicament here, but he's got that shoulder. It's still off. The referee checking it very carefully. This is a critical fall, a critical situation. And uh, Dory Funk Jr. could not do it. He could not get those shoulders down for the three. When you squat with 600, 650 pounds, those biceps are so strong, you just don't close them up like that. Look three at this minutes Gordon. remaining, three minutes. He's shifting that weight to the outside and pushing away off the hip. Dory Funk making it almost impossible for him to bring over and he kicked him over with a fantastic delicacy to play himself. And who knows, let's hope that we have a change of tide here. I guess I should be partial, but I'm afraid I'm getting carried away. It's understandable, John. Wow, Funk comes off the uh, ropes again. And it is uh, Mike Graham explodes with a right hand to the side of the head of Dory Funk Jr. and explodes once again. And Funk misses it. And, uh, Mike Graham does not. What a classic confrontation here. And Mike has found himself in his deepest troubles. He's just resorted back to an old adage that his father, Eddie Graham, told him many times. It's nothing like a sit out and switch and a hard right to the jaw to even things up. Two Mike minutes Graham remaining. That two minutes. Elbow, and that's got him in trouble again. Deep inside, jet knife, cradle, he's got the pin. Beautiful, beautiful move by Mike Graham. Mike Graham into an inside cradle on uh, Dory Funk Jr. And it was exactly as John said. Uh, Dory Funk Jr. going for the pin. That became the open critical time, and Mike Graham seized that advantage. And so it now stands, Mike Graham has won a round. We'll be back with the next round five in a few moments. Funk has two rounds, and Mike Graham has a round. So, uh, 
Mike Graham has even things up a little bit here as we enter this fifth round. And again, this becomes a crucial round, and it is uh, Dory Funk Jr. very quickly trying for a uh, pinning combination. Well, we see a strange twist in the strategy of Dory Funk. It's one of the first times I've ever, ever seen him play what we call <coughs> pardon me, a banana split, especially this early in the round. Uh, of course, Dory Funk to me, and Mike is a big player, he's in a bad predicament here. Uh, side Nelson here could clinch it down. Dude. He has an over, <coughs> over lever on that near arm. He's going back to that side Nelson. And he's got an over whip. I can't see whether he's got a joint on that far leg or not for a grapevine. But he has an over whip on that far leg and a side Nelson there. That upper body lever, such as he has, he could pin, might, but it can be reversed easily. Again, going for the pin, he's got himself in a little trouble here. And Mike Graham, utilizing that tremendous upper body strength, is able to escape from it. And uh, the tempers are obviously flared already in this match. And, and, and Funk placed himself into the situation of an Indian death row. You could have a submission hold right in the works right here, Gordon. Oh, boy. Mind the strain on the ligaments of Mr. Funk right now. It could slow him down, too, as far as maneuverability. Chewy Gallery. And Mike Graham seizing full, uh, full chance in this opportunity. Up that near arm and uh, is across the chin of Dory Funk Jr. trying to get those shoulders down for that three count. A very, very important. This would be a very important fall for Mike. He's going to try and work himself into a guillotine here. He's got the top lever, arm lever up top. He's got a leg over whip. Far side. And he looks like he could have him. Well, he would have him in a pin situation right here into that rope momentarily and the referee has now called for the break on that uh, basis that they were in the ropes and he is uh, warning uh, Funk again about those tactics and Mike Graham wanting no part of that there you see Terry Funk outside agitating his beautiful underarm supply by Mike Slam Dory right to the canvas and he doesn't want too many of those because of the percussion type of fall that is it takes the wind out and he needs every bit of ounce of strength of wind that he can get right now both rushers through his wide distance that devastating elbow didn't help make wind work. Mike Graham driven to the canvas once again and again Dory Funk Jr. using that forearm and he uses it with such devastating accuracy and, and effect on the forearm Catches him again, drives uh, Mike Graham to the canvas. You know, I've walked him. Oh boy. Got him in a deep inside jackknife cradle, caught him off guard. And that's going to change Funk's strategy, I would think. I think he's going to have to be a little more alert. Yes, he is. He's going to go into a control situation. He's back into that top Nelson. He brings that near leg up. He puts a side inside cradle on. And again, he's trying to make it hard for Mike to breathe. He wants to get that respiratory system so fouled up, and Mike. He won't be able to think whether he's coming or going, but that could be a long, long day away. Well, there's been a proven fact, of course, uh, uh, throughout the colleges, a recent survey showing that the wrestlers have uh, uh, one of the highest developed cardiovascular systems uh, in the Three minutes sport. remaining. And uh, we can see here why it is so uh, desperately necessary. Yes, well, it's, of course, it's a, it's a, it's a set to one and a half dozen other. The more they wrestle... The more in condition and perfectly tuned condition than they achieve themselves. And both of these wrestlers are known for their durability. You are watching, in my opinion again, two of the top four wrestlers in the entire world. And I give or take Dr. Nobody. Give or take that up you know, we've often talked about wrestling being a game of human chess. You are watching the chess master in the world, and Mr. Dory Funk. Again, in my opinion, but he's up against probably the number one pupil and the man who can possibly learn enough lessons from him to just to take those lessons and reverse it on Mr. Funk. Masalto to a step over now to an iron bar, and it is uh, Mike Graham still battling Two at this minutes point remaining. from behind. And 
And uh, Dory Funk Jr., though, is a hard-pressed uh, champion right now. He's got uh, a handful of problems here that uh, he's going to need every single uh, break possible. He's got that quarter Nelson's type of lock on the shoulder bladers. Again, he's putting punishment again, Gordon, into the shoulders, into the head, into the neck. And I would not be one bit surprised to see him like a shark switch the other extremity of body and go for that spinning toe hole. This is where he catches 99% of those wrestlers. Mike's taking an awful lot of strain right now into that left arm. Gordon is running to the illegal tactics, pulling him down by the head. And a champ being picked up now by the crowd here at the uh, Sportatorium. Go, Mike, go, go, Mike, go. And they want this young man to win this Florida Heavyweight Championship. No question about that. And that has to make that adrenaline flow just a little bit faster. In One system. minute remaining. Mike Graham is going to have to dig down deep, and that's exactly what he's been attempting to do, but he's caught twice now with forearms, another forearm that rocks him, and a fourth forearm, and a fifth. And just how much punishment can one body take? 45 seconds. And still keep coming back. But Mike Graham, there you go. You're right, John. He's going for the lower extremity now, changing his attack, going for the figure four. It's beautiful block. And reverse it. Counters it. He's going into his own figure four. From the spinning toe, it's seconds. Mike Graham in there with that figure four leg lock. He's got the Andy Graham figure four leg lock on it. And it is uh, Dory Funk Jr. conceding. Dory Funk Jr. conceding. Jerry Funk uh, charging into the ring. A second fall over uh, the Florida heavyweight champion, and that stands at two falls apiece. We'll be back. There you see it again in slow motion, where he comes and breaks up that spinning toe, goes into the figure four. We'll be back with Brown Six in just a minute. Entering round six now, and this is very much uh, a worried champion. He's got a problem with that left leg. He's uh, backing away. He's on that bicycle now as the challenger, Mike Graham, uh, moves against him. And Mike Graham immediately goes for that leg, and it was a back out by uh, Dory Funk Jr., the Florida heavyweight champion. Each man stands with two falls apiece and one draw. This is the critical uh, round. There's no good block by Funk. And a beautiful good, beautiful go overlay block by Funk. And he's holding on in spite of the fact that he's going to put himself in a little bit of a trouble here. Mike slips out from under it, and here, uh -oh, here comes Mike out from underneath. The next fall, Mike, the next fall will be the champion, whichever man wins. Look at that counter by Funk into that bar from underneath. Worked it off right off a double wrist lock into a bar top. Again, he's using that quarter Nelson Partridge, we call it, right up into that shoulder. Listen, the man was not world's champion for four years and not be able to be able to handle every situation faced by any wrestler ever in the countenance of that ring. However, this situation that's going on right now, I think Dory is finding himself in one of the toughest situations he's ever experienced. He, he wants that Florida title, he just, he just he sleeps and adores that title, doesn't want to give it up, and I know how hard Mike has been training to get a shot at it, and he wants it. Here's a double over by Dory Funk. He's going to, he may go for an over-over pin. Well, he released it. Settling for control. Oh, the tremendous heat here, and as I would imagine, exceptionally difficult to keep these holes on with total pressure simply because of the, the slipperiness of the bodies themselves. And uh, Mike Graham outside the ring, and Terry Funk again, uh, creating an outside problem. Count was broken, now Mike Graham moves back toward the ring, and it is again Dory Funk Jr. using uh, that forearm and then a boot to the side of the ribcage of Mike Graham. And time, of course, wait a second, Terry Funk interfering again from the uh, outside. And this could spell the entire difference of this match. At this point in time, it is uh, Mike Graham in trouble. Well, it's entering my mind, your mind, and the hundreds of thousands of spectators. Mike should have only been wrestling one opponent in here today, and there's been times he's had to go up against two. How would Mike done against Dory if Terry wasn't here to interfere? Again, he did that bridge out and push away slide. I've seen him do that in amateur matches many times, but Dory's got him tied up in a deep inside jackknife right now. He's got to do a weevil to the inside, bring that arm through. 
through the stomach and work his way to the inside. Try and turn himself to the stomach. And I think he's succeeding in doing it, getting out of that predicament. He's on his hands and knees. Back to their feet once again, and the chant continues, Go, Mike, go. And the challenger now in trouble against the, a very desperate, or almost frantic Florida heavyweight champion. And now, uh, no forearms here, just hard right hands crashing in on the side of the jaw of uh, Mike Graham. And Graham now retaliating. That famous Graham punch. Both men definitely showing the signs of strain and struggle that's been going on for nearly an hour now. Gordon, I don't know how these two men just can go on. The champion down to one knee. Mike Graham has him staggered in the champion, trying to get his head clear. Caught again by Mike Graham. And Graham now. Pounding away on uh, the champion in the champion's face. Suddenly becoming a crimson mask, it is Terry Funk. Three and minutes remaining. And a worry, Terry Funk indeed. As a Terry Funk Jr. missed with a haymaker right hand. And it's Mike Graham again using those hard right hands. And Mike Graham going for that figure four. Broken up. Terry Funk caught that time by Mike Graham. And now Dory Funk caught by Mike Graham. Terry Funk is down and now Mike Graham can concentrate on that Florida heavyweight champion. And the champion swinging wildly now. Dropped to the canvas again. And the champion leaves the ring. The champion now in desperate straits. In strength, bringing him back inside the ring. Now as the challenger, Mike Graham, continues to close in. And again, it's the champion missing with the right hand. And Mike Graham pounding away at the head of Dory Funk Jr. Mike Graham, just a three count away from the Florida heavyweight champion. Two minutes remaining. And Dory Funk Jr. through those ropes again. Mike Graham now retali puts the boots to uh, the rib cage of uh, Dory Funk Jr. Mike is so incensed and enraged right now. Of course, and I can't blame him. Uh oh, deep double by Funk. I was afraid of something like that. His feet up in the road. Feet on the ropes, the referee caught it. No pinfall there, and Mike right after him. And Mike Graham has been known to put out a few lights in his career, and that's exact. Ooh, uh -oh. both men. Both men over the top rope. Could have a severe injury here on either one of them. to make it back inside before the count of ten. One minute remaining. Made it back in. Dory Funk Jr. waiting for it. Mike Graham fired him off. Got both men down. Both these men are only going on animal-like instinct to continue me on in case 45 of all this, seconds. Yes, all this adversity. He's got a press here. Again, that heavy bridge and push slide away. Save Mike. Here comes that Inside jackknife cradle, Funk got him tied up. Some more his muscles, stretched out, saved him again. Took him over with a lever. And Mike came away again. And now it is a pair of sixer between these two. A back alley brawl, if you will, a double leg pickup by Mike Graham. He's going for that figure four. He's got the figure four. Ten seconds. Got the lock. That should be it, Gordon. Should be, and we could be seeing a new Five Florida seconds. heavyweight champion here as Dory Funk Jr. hangs on, but Mike Graham keeps that figure four since then. Time limit has expired. Time limit has expired. And uh, let's watch carefully here as we see exactly what did happen. We'll review this entire situation. Uh, the takedown, the lateral press. There's that uh, push and slide as you were talking about uh, earlier, John. And uh, then the, the two of them erupting into a series of uh, hard, hard punches to the head. 
And, of course, time at this point was continuing to run out. Mike finally uncorked with a right hand that absolutely staggered the champion. A quick double leg pickup and uh, went into the figure four. And at this point, of course, and Mike Graham has joined us now, uh, at this point I'm sure he felt that he had uh, the Florida Heavyweight Championship uh, firmly within his grasp. But... Uh, as the referee is checking, Dory Funk Jr. withstanding this tremendous pain, not conceding, but the time, the clock is still running, and uh, time does run out. And unfortunately, uh, instead of Mike Graham gaining the Florida Heavyweight Championship, it turns out that uh, Dory Funk Jr. retains it. Uh, it ends up as a draw match. You know, Gordon... It's awfully hard to wrestle two men at one time. The only pinfall that Dory Funk scored on me was after his brother had interfered in the match. Now, if I can get him in the ring, guaranteed nobody to come down, suspend his brother from the state of Florida, put us in a cage, put us someplace but so that it's only one-on-one, -on -one, I'll guarantee you, I'll beat the man. I just pinned him twice. I had no help. I was out there by myself. He thinks he's a champion. How can you be a champion when you got to have your little brother to come out and help you? His little brother won the fall for him. He didn't want him. Here I stand. Where is he? Where is he? I just wrestled a whole hour on television. I'm standing out here talking about it. Where is he? He's got to send his brother out here. His backstabbing brother. Say something. You people have to talk up here and call me his little brother. What I am is I am a man. I am a man. I've earned that right to be called a man. My brother has earned the right to be called a man the Florida State Championship. Now, what have you ever earned? What price have you ever paid in your entire life? You have got the favoritism of the referee in the ring. It proved it time after time today. And you're going to stand up there and try to deny that because you have been a favorite in Florida for years and you're a favorite not only with the people, but you're a favorite with the referee. You're a favorite with the officials. Why don't you go ahead sometime and just come into the ring Mr. sometime Funk, with Junior? Why don't you just why don't you just he's got this guts enough, I'll be there. You're I'll be there. Anytime he's got guts well, enough, the I'll be there. The challenge is there and our time is gone. And we'll see you next week. Right, son, he can't be